Hello, everybody. We are testing out Marabou crayons for the first time. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't take an art class, we've got everything you need here at Artprof. Critiques, tutorials, professional development, and workshops. These are Marabou crayons, and I have never used these before. So you're going to get to see my very first reaction. And then we'll do a quick portrait sketch. Let's just test these out on my sketchbook first so I can see how they function because I'm pretty used to the Karen Dash crayons, but these seem a little bit softer. Oh, whoa. They're really soft. Sheesh. Oh my gosh. These feel so different than the Karen Dash crayons. Wow. To me, they feel closer to oil pastels than crayons. Let me see how well they, I mean, there's no resistance as I'm going across the page like this. Because with oil pastel, there's resistance and crayons as well. You have to press pretty hard. Let's try some of this lavender. I want to see how it goes over the pink. That's really surprising. It actually doesn't blend that well without smudging. Let me try that maybe orange on top. I'm just curious about the layering. I don't know. I don't even feel like I would call these crayons. They feel much closer to oil pastels, but they're, you can smudge them a little bit, but not much. You probably would have to build up. Let me see if I press down a lot, if that makes it easier to blend. A little bit, but they're not as chunky feeling they, they feel a lot neater it's sort of like if a karen dash crayon got married to an oil pastel this would be their love child <laughs> i would want to see how it looks when i put the blue over it that's so weird because if you look here, putting the blue over the magenta, it, it didn't disturb the magenta at all. Perhaps that is the part that makes it more like a crayon. Let me try the same thing. I just can't get over how smooth they are. I mean, I, I, it almost feels slippery. Like, there's so little resistance. Well, I'm just wondering if these are better if you smear them or if the layering is better. Because I don't feel like this layers the same way as the Karen Dash crayons. The Karen Dash crayons, they just feel really stable. These are here, but they're more fragile the way that oil pastels are. Let me see how far I can layer. Because with Karen Dash crayons, I layer a lot. I mean, in some cases, it could be like 15 layers, depending on what I'm doing. Tell me in the chat, how many people here have tried Maradubu crayons? How many of you never heard of them? Because actually, I've never heard of them. And it wasn't until Johanna in the Patreon group told me about these and then purchased them as an Amazon wish list for our raffle. And I was like, wow, I, I didn't even know <laughs> these existed. And they're really, I don't know, it, it's like a Sennelier white oil pastel that's very neat. It has that same smeary feeling, but let me see. Yeah, so if I did this, 
with oil pastel, it would go all over the place. But perhaps the advantage of these crowns is the oil pastel like interaction, but very neat. There's not the mess because with oil pastel, there's always like these little pieces that flake around and they're messy. These are not messy at all. They really do glide. Why are these individually wrapped? Pain in the butt. Okay. Let's try some of this yellow ochre on top. I was actually initially going to do these on Yupo paper or mineral paper because I was just curious. But actually, oh, Johanna is here with us live in the chat. Thank you so much, Johanna, for helping us test out all these different supplies. And you guys can do that anytime you want. I mean, we don't have to have a raffle for that to be the case. I know sometimes people will say to me, have you tried these supplies? I want to see your reaction to it. And in some of those cases, people have bought me the supplies so I could try them on the live stream. So this is so wonderful when you guys support us this way. I'm going to keep layering. I'm just curious if I can get it to the point of those Karen Dash crowns where it's really, really rich. Because I want to know how far they layer. I mean, they definitely don't blend into each other much. And I know with oil pastel, they would totally disrupt each other. I'm just curious if I can use them in a similar way as I used the Caran d'Ache crayons, where you can just layer like crazy. Actually, you know what I should do? I should see if white goes over it. Let's see. How about we try the dark area? Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, nice. Okay, so maybe the white can almost behave as a blender. But I'm seeing as I'm putting it over this whole area, the white does not have any opacity to it. So it's more like a blender than it is white because... I did that stream earlier with the Sennelier oil pastels and you can slap down big chunks of white and it's like opaque white. This is not really the same thing. This is pretty smeary. Let me see what happens when I put colors over the white. All right, so it can blend, it seems, pretty continuously. I'm not seeing the blending go to the point where I don't feel like I can blend anymore. I mean, certainly things are going to get a lot more muddier the longer that you work on them, but they're very neat. They're sort of like Caran d'Ache crayons that are very slick and very lipstick like without the mess of these oil pastels. Let's see what people are saying in the chat. Blue Wolf is asking, comparing them to Neo Color 1 or Crayola. Crayola crayons, I don't like a lot because the pigment is really weak. And so you don't get that rich, vibrant color that you can get with Karen Dash. Neo Color 1, first of all, is just hard. These are not hard at all. They're more lipstick like. They're not very coarse though they're really really smooth that's the thing that i'm noticing and i also think if i were to choose between neo color one and these i would use these if i wanted to work faster because the slippery quality of it makes these really pick up the pace caran d'ache crayons require a lot of physical pressure they take a long time to build up but this area that I'm building right now, it's already pretty rich and I haven't really done that much. So I think in terms of speed, that's probably one of the bigger advantages of these. That said though, there's not a lot of resistance. And so 
I wonder if actually using a more coarse paper would be interesting. And I do have watercolor paper here, which is cold press. And so it has a texture to it and we could see how it functions. I feel like I would not want to do these on Yupo paper. I feel like I would just be slipping around <laughs> like crazy. That might be a little bit too much in terms of losing that stability. I feel like I would totally lose control. Yeah, it is a lipstick like feel, but it's like really smooth lipstick. <laughs> Jesse says, I really like these for mark making, but they're not especially light fast from what I understand. Let's see. All right, it doesn't look like the box has any information, but maybe somebody can look it up because, yeah, that's the issue. <laughs> if they're not light fast, it's not very good. Jane says, I looked into them as an alternative to Fabric Castell gelatos for mixed media, but haven't tried them. Usually for oil pastels, soft pastels, I tend to like working on toned paper, but I feel like these are not opaque enough for that to work out. Actually, if you guys give me a minute, let me just go get some black paper because I have some on the shelf over there. So just give me a second. <laughs> Because the thing that I'm thinking is that because they glide so well, it does feel like they're inherently transparent. It seems like they wouldn't be good for opaque passages, that you would have to make sure that it's more about the layering of transparency. So I actually have this piece. All right, let's try this one. This is sort of like a neutral gray. Okay, so the dark colors are fine in terms of coverage. Let's build up some lighter colors. I guess. Oh, wait a second. That's the blender. Oh my gosh, I didn't know there was a blender. Okay, so we've got the blender and we've got the white. Okay, I want to see the difference. So let's just build up some color. I, I, this is so fast. I mean, there's no chance I could do this with the Karen Dash. Because I'm wondering how the blender compares against the white. Yeah, they're a little slick for me. I like having a bit of resistance. Okay, so let's try the... Okay, this is white. And you can see the white on the paper, it's, it's not white. It's pretty transparent. So yeah, this probably would be a material I would stick with white paper or very light colored paper. Let me try the blender. Oh my gosh, the blender is so weak. It's like doing nothing. Actually, let me try it on the white piece of paper because it could be on this paper. We don't see it very well. Let me just build up a little more color. Okay, let's try the blender again. Oh my gosh, you guys, the blender is like useless. It, it does nothing. Like, look at this. I'm putting it all over the blue and nothing is happening. <laughs> Let me try it. Uh, maybe with two colors that are a little more different. How about this? Oh my gosh. It does nothing. Why? Why do we have this blender? It, it's useless. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> if you buy them individually, don't buy the blender. The white is pretty good though. 
but like I said, it's weak. It's not very strong. They're, they're sort of like slippery, wimpy Karen Dash crayons is how I would describe it. <laughs> Which is not a very positive description, but as somebody who's really used to the Neo color crayons, that's my reaction. Let's see what else people are saying. Oh, yes, Ivy, let's try some water because that is something they're water soluble. And let's see what that does. Okay. Okay, they do lift. But it's pretty weak because I've used water with Tombow markers and those are really rich. Like you actually get a lot of color. Let me try an area where there's actually a lot of color. So how about down here? I mean, that's a really nasty color. Huh. I mean, it makes sense that the color is super transparent. It just doesn't have a lot of body. I mean, it's, it's cool that they're water soluble, but I'm not finding it. Like if you guys look here, you can still see those initial strokes. It doesn't seem like you can just wipe out the color. Like even here, I can still see a little bit of the blue strokes underneath. So yeah, I guess you could use color. I'm not that impressed with the color part of it. Calm Cuke is asking, thus far, do you think these could be used for a professional piece? Why not? I mean, it just depends on your preferences. I don't feel like these are the best match for the way I work because I really like having deep, vibrant, luscious colors and the lack of opacity is a problem for me. I feel like if I did use these, I probably would combine them with oil pastels. So probably this would be the first pass and then I could beef up some areas with oil pastel, but it's not very good in terms of getting coverage. So if I put the colors on top of each other, unless it's a really dark color against the light color, the coverage is not going to be great. Oh, this is good. Johanna says for in-person figure drawing. Oh, I could definitely see that because the figure drawing, you do need that speed. So these would be great for figure drawing. I think what I'm considering is if I were to do like a finished piece that I wanted to layer a lot, I feel like these would have a limit for how far I could layer. Yeah, this is a good point from Blue. You have to plan your colors with them since the bottom layers seem to show through rather than blend. And Lisa says, I'd want to make wider marks, not just the tip. Well, I'm wondering, do you, oh, they go up. Ooh, I probably shouldn't put them all the way up. I guess in theory, I could just try another sheet of paper. I mean, if I really wanted to, I suppose I could push it all the way up and cut them. But I suspect the reason they come in these containers is that they're smeary enough that I feel like they would get really dirty really fast more so than oil pastel. So maybe that's the reasoning behind that. Alexandria says, maybe the blender has a loading process, like tap a few times. Well, I could try it. I mean, I don't really see other options. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it has any other thing to do. Ivy says, maybe they would blend if you tried color, blender, and then color. Oh, let's try that. Okay. Good suggestions, you guys. Super helpful. Okay. So there we got color. Let's try the blender. 
And let's see what happens if I put purple over it. It is still useless. <laughs> the plunger does nothing. <laughs> oh, Calm Cuke says blender down first, colors on top, then blend with color. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> All right, blender first. Uh, colors on top. Okay, yeah, it doesn't really affect the red. Let's try. By the way, I know I, I was drinking out of this, but now it's become my paint water, which is a little dangerous, but whatever. Oops, shoot. I have a lot of blue on there. I mean, I guess it sort of gets away more the initial marks, but I can still see them. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the blunder right now. <laughs> yeah, Samane is saying, as we said earlier, figure sketching, landscape sketching, I think they would be good for plain air because on plain air, you have that limited time. So I think anything where you don't have hours and hours to work on something, it probably is a really good fit for that. Yeah, that's my reaction, Alexandria, that they just feel weak and there isn't that burst of color that you get from oil pastels or the Caran d'Ache crayons, which is why I'm thinking they might be good as a type of underpainting for a drawing. So maybe you do the initial sketch with these, and then once that's more solid, you then build other things like oil pastel on top. But they're, they're good for sketching, I would think. Okay, let's try some drawing. Let's see. Oh, you know something else? I forgot to do the black. Let's see what the black does. Let's start with the white. Just. Yeah, like that's not white. This is a very transparent white. And you know something? No matter how hard... I blend and layer like that's still almost a medium gray. It's not that great. Let me try some of the other colors on top and see if they get better coverage. Yeah, like that is so weak. So that's the pink there. And that's the pink here. So it seems like for these crayons, that dark surfaces would not work very well. Let me try this yellow of course is wrapped. I thought I unwrapped them all, but I guess not. How do I get this wrapping off? I need like a pair of scissors. Oh, here we go. Oh my gosh. The yellow is like green on top of the black. Yeah, it doesn't even look yellow. Let me try a mid-color. Oh yeah, these are not good on black paper. They really just don't have the coverage. Everything is really dark. And this color, which is sort of peachy, it looks like white on the black paper. It doesn't even have that pigment. Okay, so I would say it's better here. And, and yes, Anna, there is a inaccuracy here with the colors because the webcam just isn't as good as say a DSLR. But what I can do is after the stream, when we're in the discord, I will post some of these photos. So that way you can all see what the actual color is. It's this. Is this gray? Oh, okay. I thought it was metallic. Oh, that one's even weaker. <laughs> Let me try a super saturated color. Let's try red. Yeah, not good. The black paper does not work out well. Yes, so they're, as Savané says, highly transparent. Okay, let's try a drawing with them anyway. This is actually leftover watercolor paper. I started drawing and then never finished it. But now I'm feeling like because the coverage isn't very good, that maybe I do need white paper. I think I do have some. Oh, here we go. Okay. Let's try this. 
so I was just going to do a quick study. And by the way, everybody, the link to the reference photos is in the video description below if you'd like to draw along with me or if you got other projects, that's always fun too. So tell me in the chat, is anybody here working on another project? Are you gonna draw along with me? Totally up to you. I love that we can draw together. So I actually chose some stills from the upcomer Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. And the reason I picked it is two reasons. First of all, I felt like because these are so saturated that it would be a good fit for these. Because actually, if you look at the range of colors, maybe they have a bigger set, but there are not a lot of neutral colors. Most of them are pretty bright. And even these, oh, is this gold? Is it? Yeah. Oh, this is gold and this is yellow ochre. Okay. So it seems like there are some metallic colors. Is this silver? Yeah. Okay. So this is silver. Whoops. And this is gray. Oh, I want to see if there's a difference between silver and gray. Let's try that out. Okay. So this one is light gray. do a comparison light gray and this one is silver uh, they're a little different but not by much I think the thing about the silver is they're these like streaky parts and the light gray is definitely cooler the silver has a touch of warmth to it I want to try the gold. This one's caramel. Okay. It's a pretty straightforward yellow ochre, but it's pretty bright for yellow ochre. Okay. So this is the gold. Yeah. It, it's the same comparison. So, okay. I guess if I do this, you can see there's a little bit of a sheen. I'll try it on the silver. Okay, so that's the biggest difference. I guess I can see that. But I feel like I would want more metallic colors. Gold and silver is not very much. I know, I'm being very demanding. <laughs> All right, let's just try it on the watercolor paper. I wanna see how that works and then we can get back into it. So what I was thinking is I would do some of the rendering of the form and then the lipstick could be like the last pass. I do really like the hair, has some really beautiful textures. And then she's wearing this outfit that's really dark neutral green and I'm not trying to do anything original today I'm just testing these out so this is a practice piece but I really do like this photo a lot I think it's really well shot I think the definition of the skeletal structure is very good the lighting is excellent so this is what I would consider to be a good reference photo because it has all those qualities there's a lot of photos that are terrible reference photos because the lighting is bad or something like that. Okay. Let's start with something fairly light, fairly neutral. I wonder, that's the other thing. Is there not, there are not a lot of light colors. I would say value wise, are these the only two light colors besides white? Yeah. Oh, that's so weird. So everything in this set is either like this, which is really, really dark, 
or if it's more medium, it's super saturated. Okay, so it's a fairly limited range of neutral colors, which is a big difference. I mean, Karen Dash is like that too. Unless you get a set of 150 crayons, you are not going to get a lot of neutral colors. You're going to get really bright garish colors. So in that sense, this is sort of similar to the Karen Dash. <laughs> oh, Ivy's asking, would they lift if you scraped for marks? Well, I got a palette knife here. Let me just lift this a little more. Let's see if that actually does anything. Because you can do that with oil pastels. Oh, it's more like a black magic resist. <laughs> Does anybody remember that from elementary school? You would paint colors and then you'd put black tupper paint on top and then it's sort of like a really easy scratch board. But that's what I'm getting here is the blue underneath the purple is getting scraped off, but in a very neat way. Well, welcome, SK. It's so lovely to have you here. And I know a lot of you lurk, and that's fine. But I do love it when people say hello for the first time. It's just really nice. Okay, I'm going to try the yellow. Let's just see... Oh gosh, that is so bright. I feel like maybe this would be a better color. So I'm just blocking in structure of the head, mass of the hair. I'm not going to do a huge amount, but I do want to include some of the neck so she's not totally floating. So actually I have to draw it pretty small because this sheet of paper is pretty limited. Cheekbones in this photo are amazing. <laughs> she could probably compete with Benedict Cumberbatch <laughs> in terms of <laughs> those cheekbones. And she's got an amazing sternocleidomastoid is this V shape muscle. And then here are the collarbones. I think I made her hair too wide. Just... I mean, this photo is making my life very easy. Things are just really, really well defined. The other thing I'm noting is it is pretty hard to draw light. I think because they're so soft, I'm noticing that the marks that I'm putting down, they're pretty dark. And so maybe that would be one thing to consider is to try to get a lighter one if they have it. I don't know. Does anybody want to look up for me what is the largest number of colors that they have in the marabou sets? Because I don't know how far up they go. I know the Sennelier pastels were really, really neutral, I, which I was surprised by because usually a lot of these pastels and things, they have really bright colors, but the Sennelier's actually frustrated me because they had too many neutral colors and I didn't have any that were really bright. <laughs> But yeah, these are great for gestures. They're really, really slick. Okay. I'm just going to block in. Well, I would say to build up, but you know what? Let's just go right in. <laughs> Let's just put in some really dark colors. I sort of want a blue, but is this the darkest blue? Yeah, this is the darkest blue that they have. I guess this is sort of like ultramarine. Oh my gosh, I can't open this. Come on. So the other reason that I chose this image, this is another crazy Clara idea. Oh my God, I can't focus. <laughs> I put out my portfolio for editorial illustration. Oh my gosh, that is really bright. Maybe I will go with the dark brown. Yeah, let's do I don't think this is going to help me. Let 
so that was good. And I was very happy that I got it out there. But one thing I've been doing lately because of the editorial illustration is I've been looking more carefully at editorial illustrations because I read the New Yorker regularly. I read the New York times every day. And that's largely where you're going to see editorial illustrations in publications like that. And I was just looking and well, yes, they do have, Oh my God, this looks like crap. <laughs> well, there certainly is room for all different kinds of illustration styles. I definitely have noted that a lot of the editorial illustration right now, there's sort of a trend where things are really stylized, super simple graphic shapes. And they, they tend to, I find, favor that more. It depends on the publication. I did notice that, I mean, Time Magazine is sort of the opposite. It's almost super realistic and conservative style. I mean, to the point where I actually don't think I'm a great fit because, yeah, a lot of the stuff I do has a degree of realism, but this stuff was like really, really tight, super detailed illustrations that I just was like, yeah, that's not a good fit for me. But anyway, I was thinking to myself that actually my style does sort of fit movie posters more, Broadway posters. I mean, I started thinking about Broadway anyway, because I was doing it. But in terms of getting like gigs, I was looking at a lot of movie posters. And I was like, you know something? I sort of feel like my style is a better fit for these movie posters in terms of what's sort of trendy. And so I started doing some research because actually, although I'm not a graphic designer at all, although now I'm feeling like I should learn about graphic design more. I've always loved those movie posters, those classic movie posters by Saul Bass. And I mean, those are iconic posters that were very famous. He did ones for Alfred Hitchcock and I've always just loved them as examples of graphic design and topography. And he, he's just so brilliant. And then I found another artist who apparently is the it illustrator in movie poster illustration. And actually, you know what I could do? Let me type her name into the chat because her name is very complicated. There's my keyboard. Okay, Akiko Sternberger. I think that's correct. If you guys type it in, I'm sure Google <laughs> will correct it for you. But anyway, I was looking at her posters and I think they are so well done. And then the other person I was looking at too is James Jean. Who here knows about James Jean. He's really popular. I mean, people sort of worship him. He has that, I don't know if you would call it cult, but people really, really like his work. He's extremely popular. But he did movie posters for, he did one for The Shape of Water, that Guillermo del Toro movie. And... There's another one he did that was very popular. I can't remember right now, but I was looking at their work and in some ways it's sort of frustrating because those are two people who are like at the top of their game and are probably some of the most successful people in that business. So I find that kind of frustrating. So when you're trying to research an industry, you're trying to understand better what it's like 
inevitably you end up looking at the most successful people because they're the ones who are getting the most visibility and they are good examples of, okay, well, here's the possibility of where your work could go. You guys, this looks like garbage. <laughs> this looks really, really bad. So far, oh my God. I might do a quick wash of water over it because it's just a mess. It's really bad. <laughs> Sheesh. These things are hard. I am not finding these easy to work with, actually. It could just be that I need to settle in, but they're just... I, I guess if I were to work on these again, I probably would try to work bigger. I feel like this is way too small for the scale. So anyway, I was looking at those posters and I was like, you know, I think we could do that. Because a lot of the posters do have a more realistic bent. So here's interesting. People ask me a lot about networking and how to put your name out there and all that stuff. And so what I did for the movie posters, so actually the movie poster industry is largely advertising agencies. So it's very different because editorial, you're working with people who work at the New Yorker art directors. I mean, they've art directors at advertising agencies as well, but it's not quite the same thing. Advertising agency is a very different creature than say a publication. And so I looked up all these agencies. I sent out my portfolio to a bunch of them. And you need to work on my portfolio more because if I'm going to do that, I definitely need some sample illustrations. Oh my God, this looks like crap. <laughs> it's, it looks really bad, you guys. <laughs> Let's do some water on top. Maybe that'll help. Of course, I don't have my watercolor brushes here. Let's just use this. This is fine. I just want to shake things up. It's just really, really messy looking. Oh my God. And gosh, I did not prepare for this stream. I don't have any paper towels. So let's just use these Kleenex. <laughs> Maybe they do really do better. I don't know. Maybe my approach was wrong. Maybe these really are better with the water. Because I do find them absurdly blunt. So I'm just going to make a big mess out of this. Oh my god, this is like the crappiest drawing I've done in a live stream like ever. It's so bad, you guys. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> Sometimes that's just the way things are. <laughs> it's just getting worse. It's so bad, you guys. Oh my god. <laughs> <coughs> It's, it's a mess. Oh my God, this is such a disaster. So anyway, I sent out my stuff to a bunch of advertising agencies and I did get one positive response. One out of 50. Oh my God, this is such a wreck. Like, literally, I think this is the worst painting I've ever done on a live stream. It's that bad. It's really bad. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's so awful. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Because I, I came on the stream today, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll do something that could be the beginning of my portfolio. This is not it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like totally misunderstanding this material. <laughs> Let's see what people are saying in the chat. Yeah, see, it's bad. It's really, really bad, you guys. <laughs> Rachel says, so refreshing to see someone create something they don't love on stream and not really care. You guys, it's terrible. It's like embarrassing if I did something like this. And it was the first thing anybody ever saw for me. They would not have any confidence in my drawing skills. I'm just going to block in. It's a combination of things. I think I'm drawing way too small. And the colors are not so easy to work with. 
But let's just see what happens. Maybe putting in the back. I should have put in the background a lot sooner, but whatever. So let me just do a quick pass of water. Yes, it does need to get bad before it gets better. But this is really, really bad. This is maybe past the point of return. I mean, it, it looks like a seventh grader drew it. It's so bad. I'm sorry, seventh graders. I'm not trying to put you down. It's just when you're 48 and a <laughs> professional, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, like this background is really hard to do because the shapes of the initial marks don't go away. See that? You can still see all the brown. Yeah, these are pretty hard to work with. I'm not finding them that easy. Although, I mean, it's not necessarily the crayon's fault. It could just be that for my particular style... Okay, this is not going on the thumbnail. <laughs> this is not going anywhere. Nobody will tap on it. Maybe they'll tap out of it for like morbid curiosity. Like, oh, let's see how crappy this live stream is. Yeah, it's pretty hard to get definition. I'm not finding that easy. So anyway, getting back to the networking story. So I sent on my portfolio, I got one good reply. And, okay, so two things happened. I got another reply that was very frustrating, and I'll tell you why in a minute. And somebody actually called me on the phone. I was like, whoa, <laughs> like people don't do that very often. And this guy that I talked to, I queried him because I, I thought he was an art director. It turns out he was an actual like bona fide movie poster illustrator and so actually he wasn't quite the right person in terms of uh you know like somebody who could book a gig for me but he just called me and he was so nice he said to me i had a lot of people help me when i was first getting started so i figured i'd do that for you i was like wow this is a really really nice person like, you don't get a lot of people like that. Like, he didn't have any reason to need to help me. He totally could have just read my email and not done anything. But he was so nice to call me. And we ended up talking for a little while. And he told me all these things about the industry that I never would have known about. And it was just so helpful. I was like, my God. I got really lucky here because it's just not common that people do that type of thing. And tell me in the chat, who here is interested in networking and who here maybe has interest but doesn't really know how to go about doing it? Or how many people have tried networking but really had a hard time really getting something out of it or maybe you feel like you just are not really sure what to do? So that guy was super nice. And that this was very strange. So another company said, oh, okay, great. And they said, well, we actually do this thing where we have you do this like test project where we, we bring you on for a project and it's not paid and you work with us and we see if it's a good fit. I was like, okay, that's fine. And then he sends me the brief, which is like, okay, here are the requirements. Here's what you have to do. And I'm reading the thing. And I'm like, you know, this really sounds like it's a graphic design position. And I thought that was really strange because if you look at my portfolio, it, I am so clearly not graphic design oriented. I'm much more the illustration end of things. And... I'm reading it and I'm like, I don't think these guys looked at my portfolio because why would you send me this? If you had looked at my portfolio and seen the work that I do, it's like you would not ask me to do a graphic design job. That just isn't my jam. You could tell that in a heartbeat if you looked at my portfolio for three seconds. And so I wrote back to them and I said, oh, sorry, I don't think this is a good fit. But it occurred to me and I feel kind of dumb 
realizing this right now, but that a lot of these people don't look at your portfolio that carefully, if at all, and that I have to watch out for something like that because it would have been a waste of my time and their time if I had gone through with that test project. I did have a couple people who were positive and I could tell from reading the email that they had looked at my portfolio. It was very, very clear. And so I, I just was like, wow, that never even occurred to me that I would have people that would have that reaction to my portfolio. Like that, that really surprised me. Okay, this is officially the worst drawing I've ever done on a live stream. So you know what we're gonna do? I'm just gonna smear it like crazy. <laughs> we're just gonna go to town. <laughs> this is what I just do. I just, like, oh, things are not going well. Let's just mess it up more. <laughs> It's so crap. It's so bad. <coughs> it's really bad. This is like, this is terrible. <laughs> Let's just give her these ridiculous eye sockets. <laughs> oh my God, this is so bad. Guys. It's like new range of badness that I didn't know was in me. <laughs> It's really bad. When in doubt, just smear and make a mess. <laughs> Let's see what people are talking about in the chat. And that's it. Baby Jane meets Robert Smith lipstick. This is exactly it. <laughs> I don't know, Blue. I don't have a lot of faith right now <laughs> that this is going to be fixed. Well, because let me try putting the white over it, but I'm not confident that I'm going to, well, I don't know. Let's see. I'm, I'm just going to spend a little time with the white, see if I can resurrect something out of this experience, but I'm doubtful at this stage. Yeah, it looks like the white just isn't helping me very much. I mean, it's a, it's a little better, but I guess I could throw in a couple highlights. But I don't know. The white is just so weak. Ugh, that is not better. That really is not better. I mean, I guess I'm getting a few more highlights, but not much. Ugh, and that white is really chalky. This is really not good. Oh, I don't like this, you guys. You know, I think it, I think we were due a total fail. <laughs> yes, getting a response does feel like a big deal. So here's what's very interesting is that I, I seriously, I think, sent out 80 emails for the editorial portfolio. And I got two replies. One person said, yes, I will think about you for the future. Another person said, oh, I really love your work, but I'm not an art director anymore. I'm like, great. That's all I got out of 80 emails, okay? And I don't think I'm a genius, but my poor boy is decent. It's not embarrassing. And you know something? If I had done that when I was 27, I would have just been crushed. I, I would have been ready to give up. And now that I'm older, my reaction is, okay, <laughs> guess I'll try again. That, that's my reaction now because I just have been in so many situations where you get nothing, like total crickets. And it's depressing to think about it like that. But I, I'm just so over it that I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, I probably would need oil pastels at this point. It's just so smeary. Like what I'm putting on top is not helping that much. Okay, okay, we have one person. One person in the universe <laughs> that likes it, Karen. <laughs> I do have problem solving skills, but I think I'm too tired today <laughs> to use them. <laughs> yeah, I would work bigger, Anna. It's just working bigger is a whole production in terms of the setup and everything. And honestly, you guys, I'm just wiped this weekend. I'm just really, really tired. <laughs> it's 
So I couldn't muster. The strength. I know it's so lame. It's like, I'm just telling you I'm being lazy today, but I'm just really tired. <laughs> Kara Sue's asking about Columbia College. I really have no idea, Kara Sue. What I would say is just look at the school, look at the student work, and that's the way to go about it. Because people ask me all the time about specific schools. What is this school like? What is that department like? And my knowledge of specific art schools is pretty limited. I can talk about the schools I taught at, Wellesley College, School of Museum and Foreign Arts, Leslie University of Art and Design, RISD. But beyond that, I don't have a ton of experience. So that's where the research part is very important. Ivy says, maybe over chalk pastels, they must have a purpose. I feel like I would go a lot bigger and I would use them as an underpainting. And then I would put everything on top. I don't think they're very good by themselves. And it's the same thing with the Sennelier oil pastels. They're not good by themselves. I would need to have something else. And I do think that is the case when it comes to any pastel-like thing. They do tend to work better in conjunction with something else. So it for me, it's extremely rare that I would go in and use one pastel brand because every brand is a little different. And I would try my oil pastels, but guess what? They're downstairs. So sorry, I can't get those out. I, I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm not totally giving up, but they're, they're not very flexible or good for making adjustments. And you know something, now that I'm doing this, I feel like they are better with water. I feel like they're not great by themselves unless you're working really big and have tons of space to do that type of thing. Let's do some, maybe some white boy stuff. Because I would like to bring out just a little bit more of some of those cheekbones, get them a little stronger. But at this stage, it's like it really does feel like I'm just using paint that I put down. So anyway, what I was gonna do regarding the portfolio thing is I was gonna make a short to tell people that actually getting nothing is the norm. And has nothing to do with your experience. Oftentimes it's just there's just so many freaking artists, you guys. There are just so many of us out there. It's really, really hard to stand out. It's a little bit less terrible. Oh, yeah. You know something, you guys? Jared Krasowska, who's been on a live stream with us before, he actually recently did a short, and I reposted it. But go to his Instagram because just lately there's been a lot of artist scam things going around. I don't know what the story is, but be careful, everybody. We do have a stream that is about artist scams specifically. And we do talk about, okay, here are some of the red flags. And you know something, when in doubt, ask us. Because in the Discord, it's great that people do this. A lot of people will say, oh my gosh, I got this thing. Everybody should keep an eye out for that. So that is very helpful. If you guys experience something like that, tell us about it so we can get the word out and tell people what to watch out for. Because, oh gosh, it is so hard. Like, I don't usually pick up phone numbers on my cell phone that I don't recognize. But the thing is, because of the portfolio thing, I was like, oh, maybe I should pick up. Because actually that guy that called me about illustration, his number looked like a number I didn't recognize, of course. And 
But then I was like, oh, maybe it's somebody else, whatever. And so I picked up the phone and they were like, oh, did you buy a MacBook Pro on Amazon? I'm like, what? So I hung up immediately because they were like, we're from Amazon. And I'm like, no, you're not. But anyway, yeah, you guys have to watch out. And when in doubt, ask us. We will do the research to figure out what's going on there. Let me put in... See, what I really need is like white. I need that for the hair. And it's just like not happening. It's a little better. It's still totally crappy. But it's not as horrible <laughs> as it was 10 minutes ago. It's still pretty bad though. So I obviously have not given up on illustration yet. But it's amazing how I spent so much time getting the portfolio to the point where I felt like it was remotely half decent to send out. And it's like, now I talked to that guy. I was like, oh my God, there's so much work I need to do. I need to do some actual movie poster examples. Oh, can you guys help me with that? Tell me in the chat what movie you think I should make a poster for. And actually, this is very interesting. So this is the type of industry thing that I would never have figured out on my own. The guy I talked to, he said that actually one genre in movies that people are really into posters, he said is actually the horror genre. He said that a lot of people that like horror movies have a real, I guess, appreciation for the posters and the art that gets created. And I was like, wow, that's so interesting. I was wondering why that would be the case. So I don't know. I think I'm actually very much a good fit for horror movies. Like I love making stuff like that. <laughs> so, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe this is going nowhere. Sometimes I just feel like a moron. I'm like, oh, Clara, what are you doing? I'm just coming up with too many things. It's just a little ridiculous. So here's a comment from Karasu who says, I'm interested in networking, but my mom doesn't think I'm ready. As long as you are being safe and not doing anything like giving out personal information, that type of thing, it's okay. You guys would be amazed how sometimes if you reach out to an artist, a lot of them reply and are very nice. I mean, I do that. A lot of times I get messages from people and I, I do the best I can to reply. And of course I can't always. Usually what I try to do is direct people to the Discord because that's going to be a much more fruitful conversation compared to just a DM with me. But, or I'll just send them a link to something that I think might help them. Because again, if I did that, I would not do anything else <laughs> all day. Anyway, you'd be amazed how if you contact an artist, leave a comment, ask them a question, a lot of them are very nice. And honestly, the worst thing is when they don't reply. That's fine. Nothing hurts you. So actually, tell me in the chat, how many of you guys have reached out to an artist who you admire. You sent them a DM, you asked them a question on their social media. Have you done that before? And was it so scary? Because networking doesn't have to be like a thing. It can just be leaving comments on somebody's Instagram. I mean, that's how Jarrett and I know each other. I mean, certainly we have the Risty connection, but I've actually never met him in person, but we've had long conversations because we talked on social media, not through DM first, but just comments. And I do feel like I could DM him about something, but I wouldn't say something like, oh, hook me up with your agent. You know, even my good friends, I don't feel comfortable saying that unless they said, hey, Clara, do you want me to hook you up with my agent? Then I'd be like, cool. But it's like people don't offer things like that unless they really like you a lot. So the thing about networking, it has to start small. It can't start as this like 
tell me your agent's phone number. Like it doesn't start that way at all. And in fact, when people do that to me, it makes me really annoyed and it just makes me not want to help them. So you have to be careful about that. Yeah, it's really hard and it can feel like a different language, but it doesn't have to be because really what has to happen for networking to work is you've talked to people and it doesn't happen overnight. And so I have a lot of people who say, well, yeah, I really got to work on networking. And I'm like, you know, networking isn't something you work on. It's just something you keep doing. You interact with people on social media, you ask questions. And so there's, to me, no such thing as like networking mode. It's like, ultimately it's just talking to people. I mean, sure, there are some people online that I'm stalking for one reason or another. So I think that's where it does get specific, where you are, for example, targeting a specific person, a specific group. But the actual doing of the networking is just talking, asking questions. Because you know something, you guys? So maybe I shouldn't tell you all this tip, but because we get so many comments, I can't reply to them all, of course. And Lauren and Mia are largely responsible for the YouTube comments. But when somebody asks me a very specific question that only I can reply to, that Lauren and Mia can't, that's when I jump in and I reply. So when people ask general questions, I leave it to Mia and Lauren because I would go crazy. But that that's really the way to get somebody's attention is when you show that you have genuine interest and it, don't fake it. You know, it has to be real. And you show that you're invested in what they do, that you're really paying attention. And you're not just saying, oh, Clara's an established artist. I want to get to know her so I could get all her resources. Like that's usually when you get in trouble is that you're not genuinely interested. You have to actually really like the work. <laughs> it's a little better. It's still pretty bad. <laughs> and yes, she probably does. This character, Harley Quinn, black coffee, cigarettes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so good question from Rachel, who says, if you apply to 80 places, don't hear from most of them, do you reapply to the same places after a certain period, or how do you handle that? Yes, good question. For me, this is the approach I'm going to take. I'm going to add some new pieces, specifically to who I'm targeting. Because actually, the portfolio I put together was initially for editorial. And now I feel like I don't need to make a new portfolio, but I feel like I would have a specific movie poster portfolio. So maybe I would add four new pieces that are specifically movie posters. I would keep some of the other pieces that are relevant, but you basically have this like core portfolio and then you have the editorial version of it and then you have the movie poster version of it. And so I wait until I had those four pieces that would take a little while or sometimes you just wait a couple months. And you could, in theory, send the same portfolio. So you send it out. You don't get a lot of replies. You make a couple new pieces. You wait a few months, and then you send it again. That's fine. You don't want to send it the next week, though. I would say probably two or three months is about right. And you guys would be surprised that oftentimes it's not that they didn't like your work. It's just they get so many submissions that maybe it just fell through the cracks. And so you cannot see that as full out rejection as much as it is. These are busy people and they have people bothering them all day. And so you have to remember that. Yes. I've been sick for like two weeks. It's really bad. My kids were really sick and I totally caught it from them. So yeah, I I'm okay. Like I can function, but it's just like mildly annoying. <laughs> Anna says, do you find cold calling useful? I never got anything out of it. I only apply to open calls or applications. My feeling about cold calling why not? It doesn't hurt you. Worst case outcome is that nobody replies, which really is not a big deal. And I know it's hard to put yourself out there, but 
the whole thing about getting, let's say, illustration jobs is visibility. Nobody's going to come to me and say, oh, Clara, do you want to illustrate that? I mean, maybe, but it, it does not happen. I mean, I don't think maybe like a few times is not common. But if you write a, a kind, professional, simple email, it can work. I did that with teaching all the time. I would just write the department head and say, hi, I want to teach. And in some cases, it did get me a job. So my whole feeling about all of these things, you guys can't look at it as rejection as much as it is putting yourself out there. Some people might bite, they may not, but visibility is everything. If people don't know you, they don't know your name, you haven't given them an opportunity to find your name. I mean, for me, a big part of the emails is that I'm in their inbox. I know that sounds like it's not that important, but it is. If I meet somebody in person and I give them my business card, I've collected business cards and lost them all the time. But once someone's in my email, that's actually a really good thing because th there's a record there of your name. <laughs> Leston says, I like it. It may not be what you attended, but that's not always so important. Absolutely. There's so many pieces where I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then I don't. And it's okay. That, that's why I like these live streams. It's just sort of like a sandbox for me to mess around. Oh, this is a good point. Linda says, I use them with colored pencils. And not a solid definitive line, so not good without layering. I wonder if these would be good. Actually, I've got colored pencils right now. <laughs> Let's see. I, I'm just really curious if I go in. Oh, they do not work. Okay, so I guess if I use colored pencils, I'd have to do that first. And then put the crayon on top. Yes, anything with NFT in it is a scam. Ignore all of those DMs. Barolina says, what if you went for totally dark hair instead? You can get the darker value there rather than struggle with the crappy white. Yeah, I would accept that. This is such a specific character that has a certain color of hair. So if I was just doing a portrait, I think that'd be fine. But especially because I'm trying to practice my illustration skills. Okay, we got some movie suggestions. Oh my God, Johanna. I wish I could unsee that movie. I know some people really like it, but I was a little traumatized after I saw that movie. The Witch. And we also have Dracula. Oh my gosh, my favorite Dracula is the one with Gary Oldman and Winona Ryder and Keanu Reeves. I watched that movie so many times in high school. I love that movie. It's so bad. <laughs> Ginger says, I've never reached out. That is scary. It is at first. But once you've done it, you realize nobody cares. Because the thing is, people are not paying that much attention to you. Not, not you, Ginger, but in general. Like, people think that we are being scrutinized all the time. But honestly, people don't care. Unless you have a huge following, nobody really cares. <laughs> Johanna says, I consider the art prof community to be a form of mutual supportive networking, especially in the Patreon group. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like I could show up in any country and there would be a bunch of people there who want to hang out. It's amazing. It's happened to me many times. Gertie says, I reached out to Christian Marclay years ago, but he said he was really busy. I thought he was just fobbing me off. A year later, his 24-hour work, the clack, came out. Oh, I don't know what that is. If you want to describe Gertie, that would be great. And, okay, good. It's a little better. Not by much, but it's a little better. Heptar was asking about raffle winners. Not yet. Raffle ended yesterday. And let's just say I'm really tired. That That's probably, so between the Instagram problem, our account getting hacked, and then the raffle, we had to extend it for that reason. I, I'm just exhausted. And there's going to be all kinds of stuff. Like I'm going to write a big thank you to the community because you guys did an amazing job helping us out. But I have to sort through all the entries because we have entries 
that were comments. We have super stickers, people on Venmo, on PayPal. So it's actually a lot of work for me to get through all the entries and do the drawing. So I will be doing that, not this week, but maybe next week. We'll see. Alexandria says, look up the idea of getting 100 no's helps develop ability to pivot after a negative income. See, to me, it, it does feel negative. But for me, it's just saying, Claire, you got to try again. That's all it is. A lot of being an artist is just try again. I think the biggest problem is when people get not a lot in return. And then they say, I suck. I give up. That's what you don't want to do. You have to pick yourself up and do it again and again and again. And yes, it's exhausting. But you know something? At a certain point, it actually does work out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Karuman, for the super chat who says, sometimes people are harsh with art sometimes. I find it hard to find people to talk and share about art because mostly people want things to be perfect, especially your own art, your thoughts. Oh, yeah, people can be horrible. You guys would not believe some of the comments we get on YouTube. And... Of course, I'm not going to pay attention to them, but sometimes they do get under my skin a little bit, and I try really hard to not let that happen. So yes, and, and people are demanding. You guys would not believe the comments I get about, you should do this, you should do that, why didn't you do this? And I'm like, oh my God, people, leave me alone. <laughs> but you have to learn to tune that out. The other thing, so you're talking about it's hard to find people to talk and share with art because they want to make things perfect. In my opinion, that's a sign that you're talking to the wrong people. You have to find people who share a somewhat similar outlook. You have to find people who really want you to succeed. <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, but a lot of people either don't care, and maybe there's a few who really don't want you to succeed. I mean, people are mean. But there is such a thing as talking to the wrong people about your art. Tell me in the chat how many people have had that experience where you talk to somebody and at first you think, oh God, my art is bad. And then you talk to people who really do want you to do well and you realize it was not you. It was that person was not good to talk to. And I hope that our Discord and this live stream is a place for you guys to get the support, to feel that there are people out there rooting for you. So I would say, Mr. Karaman, find other people to talk to because anybody who wants you to be perfect is a jerk. I mean, perfect, what is that? I want my art to be perfect. I don't know what that is. It never is perfect. And that just doesn't exist. So unrealistic expectations that people are pushing onto you is always a bad sign. Oh, okay, the clock. 24-hour <laughs> film made up of edits of hundreds uh, movie scenes featuring clocks. Oh my God. Functional clock. Amazing. All right, everybody, please join me in the Discord. In post live streams, we are going to do a short chat in there. I will also share some of the photos of the work that I did. Art Prof has services. We have artist calls, portfolio critiques, statement editing, and personal art curriculums. Join our wonderful Patreon group. We will be positive. We will support you. It's a lovely group of artists. You can share your art in weekly voice sessions. I write very long essay-like critiques. And most of all, you find support in a small group of artists. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.